What's up everyone, this is Victor. Welcome back to another Everything Technology video. Google's live stream announcement about their product line for the year went pretty well. We've all seen the Pixel 4 and how great of a phone it is. I've dropped a couple videos on it already. But Google pretty much said with that device, um, we don't need all those fancy camera stuff and bezel-less display. But today isn't about the Pixel, but about the Pixel Book Go. The message is the same here. Google is telling us that we don't need an incredible laptop, but one that gives us the bare necessities to accomplish our daily goals and live our lifestyles. The Pixel Book Go has no need to be compared to other laptops nor other Chromebooks. So in this review, we'll be discussing the Pixel Book Go in its own light. Let's get right into it. First off, let's talk about the design that was put into this laptop. We get this 13.5 inch laptop that is lightweight at 2.3 pounds, small and half an inch thin. The material of the body is made out of magnesium, which is better strength and weight ratio than other materials, and it's even cheaper at cost. The round curved edges gives the Pixel Book Go a nice sleek design. If you notice, it does share some design language with the other Pixel lineup, um, such as the rounded edges and corners. Google introduced a new design for the bottom. The rigged bottom is designed for better grip. Google is definitely thinking about us and our everyday misuse of technology and how we handle it. To add the finishing touches to the design, we have this just black matte design that looks really nice unless you prefer the not pink color option that looks really cool too. And definitely don't forget about that tiny but loud Google logo on the corner. To be honest, this build is not eccentric nor innovative, but it is nice and clean. The build quality of this laptop is good. The magnesium body we talked about earlier is pretty durable and helps the laptop stay lightweight. I also really like the fact that you can open this up with just one finger. It's really great that Google put some thought into designing the hinge of this laptop because with a lot of lighter laptops, it's very hard to open it with just one hand. The whole laptop typically comes up. If you can relate and if this has happened to you, let me know down in the comment section. Anyway, I feel pretty confident in the design of this laptop simply because it's lightweight. So if you were to drop it, it's not gonna get as damaged as a heavier five pound laptop and I appreciate those grippy sides which make it less prone to accidental drops. Now time for pricing and specs. The base model has an 8th gen Intel Core M3 processor, 8 gigs of RAM, 64 gig SSD, and a full HD panel, and that will land you at $650. Then you have the model that I have, which has an 8th gen Intel Core i5 processor, 8 gigs of RAM, 128 gig SSD, and a full HD panel, which will cost you $850. For $1,000, you can get that same 8th gen Intel Core i5, 16 gigs of RAM, 128 gig SSD, and a full HD panel. Lastly, if you want the most power for $1,400, you get an 8th gen Intel Intel Core i7, 16 gigs of RAM, 256 gig SSD, and a 4K panel. And by the way, the front facing camera is the same in all of the different versions of this laptop. They're two megapixel, 60 FPS, and capable of recording up to 1080p video. Now, battery life on this laptop, Google's claiming about 12 hours of usage. Now, in terms of my experience with it the past couple days, I say that I've been averaging about six to 12 hours of on-screen usage. And that just depends on how heavy I'm using this laptop. On, on days where I'm watching a lot of content, I'm getting just a little bit over six to eight hours. And then if I'm really heavily using this laptop, a lot of web browsing and content watching, then I'm gonna get just under or about six hours of usage. Does the Pixel Book Go actually make a good laptop? It's minimal, nice, but does it fulfill my needs? Chromebooks are built around Google's ecosystem. The purpose of this laptop is to primarily be used while connected to the internet, with most of its applications and documents living in the cloud. Google's reputation and software still holds true with this laptop, and they still continue to build some pretty great hardware to some already amazing software. You get quick power on and snappy response times from the Chrome browser. The Google Assistant button is there to aid you as you type in silence. For security, the Pixelbook has a Titan C security chip and built-in antivirus protection. You can unlock the Pixel Book Go on your Android device, and all of this can last you up to 12 hours of usage. As a Chromebook user, the Pixel Book Go is great for most students and productive individuals on the go. As a creative though, it's really hard to justify spending $650 on a machine that I don't have access to all my creative softwares. The Pixel Book Go is clearly not meant for me as a creative, but for anything outside of that, I've really enjoyed this laptop. It's lightweight design, it's super quiet keyboard, and amazing software experience is why I really love the Pixel Book Go. 
And that's it for this video, hope you enjoyed it. By no means was this a full review on this device, but if you'd like to see one, stay tuned by hitting the subscribe button and clicking on that bell icon. That way you're notified every single time I drop a brand new video. If you have any questions about the Pixel Go, drop it down in the comment sections. As always, I'll be down there responding to all of you guys. If you have any feedback or anything you just wanna say, drop it down below in the comment section as well. This has been Victor. If you'd like to see what I do outside of YouTube, you can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and even like my Facebook page at Victor's Fits. Thank you for watching this video. I look forward to seeing all of you in the next one. Bye.